curious about your justification of a certain type of Israeli state versus another type of Israeli state. I said, let me answer it in a different way. When I was a little bit dogmatic on the Israel-Palestine conflict, my, my mother cautioned me about that because my mother and father, they hated Israel, but they hated Israel because Israel was aligned with the U.S. against the Soviet Union during the Cold War after the Korean War. But they sometimes felt that I went overboard. And they cautioned me because they were very, they were absolutely atheist, absolutely secular, but also totally Jewish. And survived the Holocaust. Right. And they, they cautioned me about going too far and approaching the self-hating Jew thing. You know, and I, I, I took that to heart. You know, I, I, I respected their moral judgment. I had to listen. I had to listen. Once I was in having an argument with my mother, and I said, my mother always said, Jews need a refuge. Jews need a refuge. Because when the moment of truth came, nobody wanted us. So Jews needed a refuge. So I said, but mom, if Jews have their own state, what does that mean about the Palestinians that live in that state? And at that point, she just said, go away from me. She didn't want to think about it. She knew there was obviously a problem there, a contradiction there, but she didn't know in her own mind, and she was extremely smart, how to reconcile it, how to reconcile her historic experience that Jews needed a refuge how to reconcile that with doesn't a refuge for the Jews mean that everybody else who's not Jewish will end up either being a second-class citizen or just outright expelled. So I said that what Gromyko spoke to was the right of the Jews, based on their historic experience during World War II, to have a place of refuge, a state. But he didn't then go to that next question, which is the one I put to my mother, then what does that mean for the non-Jews who were living in that Jewish state? I think that's a very tough question, but I still, on that first part, that after that historic experience, it kind of might be construed as trumping the right of self-determination, at least in part of Palestine. So my point, and I'll leave it at that, is you can say there exists a fundamental international law prohibiting aggression, and Russia broke it. You can say there is a fundamental international law guaranteeing the people indigenous to an area the right of self-determination, and the Zionists broke it, okay? With the support of Russia, the critical support of Russia at that particular moment, because if Russia had lined up against it, it wasn't clear whether it would pass the, secure, the General Assembly. It wasn't clear whether the resolution would pass the General Assembly. Uh, uh, but in both cases, I can see, so when your listeners start attacking me, I could see circumstances in which a historical experience can trump a legal right. I can see that. Where a historical experience, be it of the Jews during World War II or the Russian people during World War II, where that historic experience can trump even a fundamental uh, tenet or, or a tenet of international law. I can see that. So you can tell me it was illegal. You can tell me it was an act of aggression. And I still say, on the basis of that historical experience, they had the right.
So you think Israel had the right to create a nation in 48? Israel at that point, does, I think it's very hard to separate out the creation of the state from the ideology that underpinned that objective. And the ideology that underpinned it, I think, cannot be justified. As Benny Morris was Israel's leading historian for a long time, uh, as he wrote in his book, the vastly expanded book on the Palestinian refugees, it's this huge volume, he says, the idea of transfer, expulsion, the idea of transfer was inbuilt and inevitable in Zionism. That's what he writes. It's inbuilt and inevitable in Zionism. So the question then becomes whether with a different ideology, not the ideology of Zionism, but with a different ideology, might it have, might it have been possible to create that Jewish refuge, but still create a place for the Jews there? That's, as you, as you can, as you are perfectly able to grasp, that is such an abstract question, because history is what history is. It's water under the bridge. I am only saying that I can see occasions where historical experience trumps the law. That's all I'm saying. I'm not denying i could play the games you know putin said well the uh the regents in the donbass they declared their uh independence and we came to their aid when they were, you know he has all these technical arguments which this is what every international lawyer does he didn't do anything with any other international law. But i don't want to play that game i don't i'll say yeah it broke the law i have right. no I, but I guess my question is whether you think it's morally justifiable. It seems like in the Russian case, no, you I, do. I, don't, I don't think you can make an argument for the expulsion of the people. Now, how you would have handled it, I think it's a tough question. I think it's a tough question. And why can't we sometimes just acknowledge these are tough questions? You know? Uh, but no, I, I don't think anything to just. You know, the Zionist movement itself never believed it could justify what it did. You know how you know that? Because for the longest time, they kept saying the place was empty. Right. A people without understood. a land, land without a people. Yeah, because they understood if there were people there, what they were doing couldn't be legitimate. That's why they kept saying it was empty. And then in 1948, they kept saying, well, the Arabs left because of the Arab radio broadcasts. Now, of course, those broadcasts never happened. But... By insisting that the land was empty and then insisting that the Arabs left of their own volition, what they're in effect saying is, if the land had not been empty and if what the Arabs and if the Arabs did not flee of their own volition, then what Israel did was wrong. So the Israeli propaganda is a backhanded admission that they themselves know what they did was wrong. 